happy Friday. I am back in the sewing room. I went and had my eyelashes done yesterday so they're nice and even for some reason this eye was looking great and then this eye had like five clinging on so yes i uh, i feel much much better and much more like myself i do love my eyelash extensions and i get them topped up every three weeks every now and again i need a two week top up and i if i'm not going anywhere i try and grin and bear it for that last week <laughs> so i have come back down as you guys know from the last waffle i have been tracing out all the t-shirt patterns that i want to get traced out they still need a little bit of tweaking and altering but the next one is the McCall's 8145 having got the pattern pieces out this has got grown on sleeves <laughs> which I'm a little bit disappointed about but never mind I mean it is obvious that it has grown on sleeves when you actually look at the line drawings and the finished garments also having looked at the finished garment measurements on the tissue paper and having read reviews online and a few of you have messaged me as well this has a unbelievably huge amount of wearing ease in it like a ridiculous amount of wearing ease i think i'm going to end up making something like the size eight to get this to fit me the way that i want it to i'm sorry but there is no way that this lady on the on the that's wearing this one on the envelope has the amount of wearing ease in this given her measurements if they took her measurements and made the size according to her measurements on this back pattern piece uh, back pattern envelope here there is absolutely zero chance that it would end up looking like this on her it just wouldn't i am actually planning on doing a video i guess i get quite a few comments on my sew alongs just saying oh there's that amount of wearing ease built in for you know for a reason you shouldn't take it all out it, this is why your garments fit so tightly i mean yes we all know i prefer a form-fitting garment i mean i'm wearing the so i've doris dress today and there is a lot of ease in this one there is a lot of ease in this one but there's meant to be and I've got it cinched at the back not tightly but you know I have got it cinched at the back with the the ties the waist ties but this does fit me nicely over the bust there's no gaping I have sewn this button placket down and this isn't a functional button placket but it's you know this is certain garments are meant to have more ease than others and I do prefer a more fitted finish for my clothing but I think I would like to do a comparison because so many people when they start sewing and so many people have messaged me and just said you know why, why is my stuff coming out so weirdly shaped what I would like to do is a comparison of me making a garment from what the pattern recommends that I should and me making the same garment in what I think I should so you know that McCall, for, for want of a different company but McCall's suggested fit and my preferred fit because I think that could be quite interesting I'm still trying to work out if I do that in some you know if I get myself some really inexpensive fabric from somewhere that I'm not in love with the print on to like actually make a finished garment i would still do the bodice length alteration because i want to give it the best chance to fit i don't want to just make it out of the packet i still want to do you know i still want to do the I, I need a long torso adjustment because i have a long torso so i still would do that but then I, do i make it out of muslin as a kind of test piece but then knowing me it would be something that is a drapey fabric and then if I make the final garment up in a fabric that I would actually wear then it's not really a fair comparison so I'm thinking I need to find myself some inexpensive fabric that I can make something up in and then just donate it or you know give it away to somebody that would actually fit well into those measurements because I think that could be quite an interesting video let me know in the comments down below what you think it's going to be interesting to see how this one turns out I was thinking that I might end up making it in one of my more expensive knit fabrics and I have a feeling that I am not going to like it the way that I thought I would and that I might need to try hacking something else to look like this like a starting point from a jumper that i know fits me like the mccall 7634 i've hacked that one i think i've got that number right but i've hacked that one so that i've taken out the i do like the placket with the hood but the some of the french terries i have are dark on the outside and then have a light white inside and i didn't want that in the hood so i 
I took the placket out and just made it a very standard, you know, cropped sweater. I love that and I've used a lot of my really fancy French terries to make that up and I'm thinking that might be a good starting point because it has the set-in sleeves so I can make the set-in sleeves much more blues on like this i can lengthen the cuffs i can put the crossover v front in and i can put in the kind of like the collar that they've got here or the facing to finish it without the collar so i'm thinking that whilst i love the idea of this i i wonder how much work went into making this one look like this because given like i say given the finished garment measurements i don't think that they've used her body measurements and made the what they suggest as the appropriate size for her i think they've made a very tiny one and then yeah anyway i mean that's something else like i i why put so much wearing ease into these things why especially like the close fitted dresses and things for stuff that you know like i mean i get that this is not supposed to be like you know bodycon figure hugging same measurements if negative ease like I'm still going to go for positive ease in my version of this but wh why especially like the woven fitted dresses that are obviously form fitting to the body why put so much wearing ease in it why because you're just setting people up especially new sewers you're setting them up to fail so yeah anyway that was quite a long rant wasn't it sorry <laughs> <laughs> so I think I showed you last time as well I have a giant pile of all my knit fabric sitting next to me here the colors together are looking absolutely awesome they're all going to be tops except for the savannah viscose jersey which i want to make a top and a dress from the 7319 you guys have asked for a sew along for that one as well so with that one the illustration looks nothing like the finished garment so the this is the pattern envelope here and it's the shorter navy dress that I, is what i want and then the made up one the 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 short navy dress and the made up physical version have the same skirt piece and i'm sorry but the fullness that is in that short navy dress and the fullness that is in the maxi dress that the lady is wearing on the cover they are not the same they're fibbing they're absolutely fibbing there is absolutely zero chance that you're going to get anything that looks like that illustration from that skirt piece so i have added fullness to it i added fullness to the first one i made in fact the first three that I made so that I could still cut it as one piece of fabric. I didn't like it so I have now added massive amounts of fullness by cutting and spreading the pattern piece then actually making the skirt into three panels rather than just the one. So I've already done all that work and that took a lot of paper and a lot of tape and stuff so I'm thinking I might try and do that on a smaller scale to show you the principle because slashing and spreading once you've seen it you don't need me to do the entire thing and with that one because there's overlays that need to be sewn like wrong side to right side and things like that people were getting a little confused with the instructions on that one so I think what I'll do is I will show you how to slash and spread on a small scale pattern piece that you obviously then do up to the bigger pattern piece and then where to cut to make it into th a three panel skirt piece rather than the single skirt panel that the pattern comes with and then like I say the the the, the, the bits that people were asking for for the sew along was really kind of like the construction methods of it and how I got that skirt to be as full as I wanted it to be so yeah yeah, but um sorry i keep going off on tangents don't i 11 minutes of waffle so i've got this giant pile next to me of stuff that is going to be tops and thinking about it i actually would like some more tracksuit bottoms the 7634 tracksuit bottoms done a sew along for that and i absolutely love how they've turned out i've made two pairs both of which are so so bobbly because they have been washed and worn so often mum's got a little comb that's supposed to debobble things i need to try it on those ones but at the moment they still fit but the elastic that i've used in the waist channel could stand to be a little larger at the moment so i'm thinking i have some really nice dark green french terry down there so i'm thinking i might pick that out and get a pair of trousers cut out at the same time as well to go with all these t-shirts and tops and things. So that is my plan. I mean, you know, I've got, hang on, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That'll be twelve fabrics to cut out. And some of these are going to be multiple things because there's two meters of all of my viscose jersey, so I can get at least two t-shirts out of them. So yeah it's going to be like a lot of cutting out and stuff like that but it's going to be worth it and it's you know it's nice to see this section 
diminishing which is good so I think the other thing I'm going to try and do as well like I mentioned this is knit fabric here so I want to take this out take these out fold these flat and try and consolidate them all into this one here because I would like my background to have like full fabric cubes but if I consolidate those two it also means I can move another cube of fabric over and then change that one into pattern storage as well which is the ultimate goal. That was a lot of waffle, I know it was a lot of waffle. I am going to shut up with all the waffle now and get on with some actual work. <laughs> A while ago I asked you guys if you'd like a sew along for this pattern because the overlays and stuff can be a little bit confusing and also you know how I've changed the skirt and you said yes. As I've already traced and done all the work I decided to do it in miniature. So uh, yeah, little mini skirt slashed and spread and then turned into new pattern pieces which do actually look like my finished pattern pieces as well so that's good but that was a whole bunch of fun to do i have also got all of the patterns that i want to cut out out of their envelopes and pressed so that they're all ready to go the final one that i've got is the 7634 i think i talked to you guys about that earlier i'm going to use this french terry that i got from girl charlie a very long time ago now i'm going to use that to make myself some new jogging bottoms that aren't quite so bobbly and that fit me a little better around the waist. Oh, that's been a very busy afternoon, very productive. So as you can see, I've moved stuff around back here. I've still got this one in the stash because I, this was expensive and I am not willing to cut into this until I am 100% sure which pattern I am doing. So I've got some wearable muslin fodder in the actual to be cut out pile, but that one, once I've worked out which one it's gonna be, will get cut out next. But we have only two rolled viscose jersey piles there are actually i took some of the red ones out there's just two brown ones in there which might fit in the top but we'll see i am probably also going to use these two colors here for wearable muslin fodder for the paula t-shirt and the kind of cutout t-shirt i'd just like to check those first as well maybe the drape t-shirt as well those two colors i'm not too precious about whereas some of the kind of like warmer actually nice colors i I'm precious about and I can't get any more of any of this because Minerva Crafts for some reason don't sell it anymore which is sad but it, it did always say it was wasn't reorderable but they had like 120 colours and they just sometimes came back into stock so it was one of those ones where I'd go through and check every now and again although I as we've talked about I have something like 36 maybe 40 of the colours including the ones that I've made up so technically really don't need any more of it do I but yes I've also moved over like all the rest of the savannah collection so that is all of the savannah collection there I've got some more of the savannah viscose chalet at the top I cut and washed another five meters so I've got a five meter cut there and three meter cut and then I also obviously have the rest of my bolt which is living under there and that I will cut and wash as I need it yeah I'm feeling quite quite happy about the progress and production levels that are going on which is good yeah just need to start cutting things out now and it's about half past four in fact it's ten to five and i have a dinner date with wilson this evening at six so i'm probably going to get a couple of things cut out but not lots of things cut out but i will put you guys up in a little crow's nest so that you can have a look at how i do that cutting out is more interesting to film for you guys rather than the tracing i did film myself tracing thing uh, i think my blue coat the yeah the, the turquoise wool this wool coat and I, I film myself tracing it and you can't see what I'm doing so I just haven't filmed myself tracing anything because it's very boring it's just a big white table with me kind of le leaning over it and looking like a crazy person. I am going to do a video of how and why I trace my patterns I know there's been a few comments recently asking for that. The lino for the table has arrived that was what I was waiting for that's also what I was waiting for for the sewing room tour so we are going to attempt to to level the top of this table because it's there's 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 two pieces of MDF because for some reason sheet materials can only be bought four foot wide and this table is five foot by five foot wide or five foot square <laughs> there is two pieces of MDF on the top of this table and they were supposed to be delivered on a pallet one day and they delivered the wrong pallet so they ended up being stored and they've warped slightly which is annoying dad has a plan to get them all level so including like you know he's gonna brace them underneath with another piece and then sort of screw them so that they 
behave themselves and go level which will be interesting so uh, we need to do that then we can put the lino on then we can put the trim around the edge and then the cutting table will be finished then I'm going to do my how and why I trace patterns video I'm also going to be doing the sewing room tour there is a new door coming but it's not going to be coming for a little while because the lead time on that is something like 12 weeks so it's been ordered it's on its way but we are still waiting for it and I don't want to wait any longer to show you guys how I have set up the sewing room because it has changed slightly since the kind of organization videos that you saw earlier this year it's changed slightly because we've been working in it and living in it and working out what is best for us so there are some little bits and pieces that have changed since you saw the organization videos and i would like to do an in-depth this is this is our space this is how we are living and working in it video they always do really well i've done two so far I think I've done two. Yeah, I did one for the old sewing room. I did one for the shop. I think I did another one for the new when I moved back into the sewing room, but I didn't it was a, it was part of a waffle. So this is going to be the new sewing garage studio room that we are now in, which is going to be exciting. Cutting out of fabric, which means time lapses for you and some of my fabulous music choices. <laughs> jogging bottoms out of that two meters of fabric if I'd had two and a half it would have been fine I usually hem them by about four inches so I took two inches off and I'm going to hem these ones by an inch so it should should work there's a little bit there's a little notch in the back crotch to seam but I'm hoping that I can just kind of like smooth that out it'll be fine then I have also cut out the under layer of the McCall's 7319 and I've cut that out of a stable cotton jersey rather than the viscose because this particular layer actually never gets seen the overlay covers everything the last one that I did was with the Cobra Corsage and I did the underlayer in black viscose jersey and I found that that actually just stretches out and you do end up seeing a little peak of just the black at the waistband which I don't like and I'm hoping that I can maybe put some ca like catch stitches in just to hopefully but I'm a bit worried about like then movement in it and tearing those stitches but I'm thinking that with the much more stable cotton base underneath the viscose layer it shouldn't stretch out as much and it should stay in place a little bit better so that is the plan with that and also to save on fabric because this is expensive and I have five meters of this in two cuts and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get a sew over it cow neck t-shirt out of this as well this is a directional print which I will take into account for the front center front skirt and center back skirt and obviously the overlays and the sleeves but for the side skirts I'm going to if I have to sort of like nest the pattern pieces and have the birds upside down because it's a very full skirt and I don't think it's going to notice because it's only the birds that would be upside down I think I'm going to get away with that and that way I hope I should be able to get a t-shirt and a dress out of this I did with my Cobra Corsage viscose jersey and I'm actually going to stop there because that viscose jersey is super lightweight and it's one of those ones where if you breathe on it it can all go horribly wrong and it's quarter to six now and as I said I've got a FaceTime date with Wilson this evening at six so I don't want to start laying that out and then it all get like you know when I shut the door on it or if mum comes down in the morning before I get here I don't want anything to get disturbed so I'm not going to start cutting out the um, floaty fabric not going to start cutting out the floaty fabric until I am ready to do all of it all in one go so I'm pleased with what I've got done today that was a lot of kind of mm, there was a little bit of tracing a lot of altering some waffling some sew along filming and a little bit of cutting out one and 
a fifth of a project cut out but you know it's a start i have moved the giant pile of fabric from the seat so i can sit down and talk to you over to the side here and it is a giant pile of fabric <laughs> i i mean in all honesty like i've got all of these viscose jerseys and i know that i want them to be a variety of these t-shirts so i'm just going to plow through and get a whole bunch cut out i'm not even ruling out cutting out more of like the darker brown tones because it'll go it may not be well, I think it is, I think there are dark brown tones in the Savannah print as well, so it will go. So if I have the momentum and the impetus to keep going and cutting things out, I am going to keep doing that. I have got all day tomorrow to cut stuff out. I am doing a hangout on Sunday. I was thinking about sewing some stuff on Sunday, but I might see how I feel and maybe continue to cut out. It worked okay. It wasn't, maybe, we'll see, we'll see, because it, I mean, it's not going to take very much to just um uh, put the take the desk out you know set it up for sewing for sunday's hangout and then take it back and put it all back to continue cutting out on monday i leave for london on wednesday i'm leaving at about half past three so i've got all wednesday morning to film because i do need to film some stuff as well so that i have some stuff to edit whilst i'm up in london although wilson does have nearly uh, nine days of holiday although we're moving house as well so i'm yeah i want to i want to try and get some stuff done for to put up whilst i'm away as well because i've had such a long break over august and september i'd like to get back into the swing of things so i'm hoping that i can maybe get a couple of sew alongs done before i go that i can then edit whilst i'm there i'm also going to be vlog daily waffling at you guys which you're going to get every other day as well so i'm hopeful that i will be able to have a video up every other day whilst i'm away we shall see <laughs> we shall see anyway that's a lot of waffle today and um, a lot of me sitting down and talking to you so i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you're looking forward to all the these projects I know I am I'm getting very excited about this color palette all together as well so yeah I hope you're excited as well and I will see you all tomorrow bye, bye.